I don't know any basketball, real basketball player that would tell you he didn't want to go to the NBA. So that's the big dream. I had a chance to get drafted, uh, but they were talking about putting me in the D League for two to three years. You know, slaving away for twenty thousand a year, ten thousand a year. Turn those down. You know, I bet on myself. Along your life, there's things of how your story goes and. For me, the bet on yourself thing, it was born out of nobody believing in me. I had to believe in myself. Obviously, it's evolved into something greater than that. I'm just that guy in the corner who really believes that he's just as good or better than everybody. He had to prove himself everywhere on every level. Van Vliet using a screen, three-pointer. Oh, Van Vliet again! Van Vliet, bang! What a tough shot. Van Vliet gets a wide open look, puts it in! Fred Van Vliet! The biggest game of his life, and he is shining. The Raptors, the 2019 NBA champs. Raptor, Raptor, it's for you, baby. Bet on yourself. It's one thing to bet on yourself. It's another to put in the work and be able to take those chips to the window and cash out. Fred Van Vliet has done that a couple of times now, and we welcome him to the show. Freddie. Thanks for doing this, and congrats on the new deal. Man, thank you. Thanks for having me. When did you know that you were going to return to the Raptors? Uh, I mean, I, that was kind of our plan the whole time, but, um, you know, just when the deal got done was, what, Saturday? Saturday morning. So um, that was a big, big relief for me to, to have that kind of behind us for sure. Now – we noticed in the deal player option for year four. So you're still betting on yourself to be able to level up. How do you want to improve over the span of this deal, the way you've improved in your career so far? Um, just keep making jumps. You know, I think keep continuing to be more efficient um, and then tighten up a lot of the things that I'm already good at. Um, and just, I think with, with a bigger role and a bigger opportunity, I'm going to have more chances to make more plays and do more things and, Become a better, uh, even even more better of a leader. Um, so everything that I've I've done thus far, I can get better at, and there's areas that I need to improve that I will improve in. So I'm excited about the next few years and what that'll look like as an individual. But ultimately, you know, the, the goal is is to keep working towards that next championship. You, you do realize that you've become almost the example to bet on yourself, to never give up, to keep working. Like other guys who are now passed over, use your name as inspiration that it can be done. Do you know that? Like, yeah, yeah, it's cool. It's it's cool to be on this side of it. Um, but you know, the others. I was just on the other side of it not too long ago. So um, I, I don't forget. You know, my memory is is not that bad. I remember a lot of uh, situations that I've been in. A lot of people saying certain things, and um, you know, you just keep that with you, and you. Try to be gracious and humble along your way, but in the back of your mind, you know, you, you always keep things in perspective. But um, I do think that it's important that a lot of guys who are in a similar position I was in can use my story, but just, you know, understand if you really want to use my story, do your research and, and, and really dive into what that took because it's not just as simple as saying, oh, everybody's overlooking me and they don't think I'm good enough. And then, you know, you sign for a big contract. It's not that simple. All right, let's examine that because I, I love it. Um, in this day and age, sometimes things become this tight little story that people can easily consume and move on. To me, it does a disservice to what was actually accomplished. Like, what do people miss about your journey to this point that you want them to know? Like, it's easy to say, hey, get on your grind or rise and grind. but <laughs> It's another yeah. thing to actually do it. Yeah, I mean, it's just you got to be the only person in the world who believes in yourself more you know, than anybody else. Like, you can't – I have an incredibly, you know, important support system behind me um, that allowed me to feel these type of things and, and allowed me to, to be on this journey. But at the same time, they couldn't do it for me. So what I see with a lot of guys is there's people around – around them that believe in them more than they believe in themselves. And that can never be the case. And for me, I've always been kind of classified as like this crazy, ambitious, arrogant guy who felt like, you know, he was always better than what he is, but you know, who's to say I'm not. And, and I'm not going to ever let anybody else put a value on me 
I'm the only person that can determine my value. And, you know, that's what's, what's led me to this point. So uh, there's no way to sum up the story. You just have to kind of look through the story and look through the highs and the lows and um, understand that you have to be okay with accepting your role because I did when I first came into the league. Yeah. I had to accept the situation I was in. But it never dimmed my flame to the point to where I just fell completely into that because if that was the case, I would still be an end-of-the-bench guy. Let's talk about that support system because when you originally signed at the beginning of your journey, uh, the money as an undrafted free agent isn't in the paper. Now you sign, the money's in the paper, it's on Twitter. Uh, How many people are starting to hit you up with numbers that you don't recognize trying to be a part of that support system now that you've really leveled up? Uh, not too many. We keep a tight ship over here. So I kind of cut off the fat really early in my life. Um, and that, no, that 500,000 I was making my first year, that was in the paper in Rockford. I guarantee you that <laughs> <laughs> on Instagram and they didn't get clicks, but people been knowing what I've been making for the last four years. So I'm used to it, but we just been running this tight ship. I mean, people see it now because I've made it to what the public views as the top of the mountain, but like the stuff that I'm saying now and the stuff that I'm doing, I've been on this for 10, 15 years now. And then just now it makes sense. Before you get to that point, it just sounds crazy. And, you know, people look at you like you don't know what you're talking about or, or you know, you believe in yourself too much. But now it makes sense. And, and now everybody can look back and say, oh, OK, he did know what he was talking about or he did know what he was doing. Or, man, how did we miss that? You missed it because you wanted to miss it. You know what I mean? That's just that's just how it goes. I love that we're hearing part of the support system right now. Is, yes. is yeah. that the same? They got, yeah, they got big boots on and beads flying around their heads, crying, <laughs> jumping around. So they never, they're never too far away. Hey, don't worry about it. I just dropped my son off back at school. Um, so let's let's talk about this because I, I, when you bring up the support system, obviously family, friends, people who work with you, people who have worked with you along the way, and teammates. And Kyle Lowry had a pretty cool Instagram post when the reports of your signing came out. And he talked about the blood, sweat, and even the broken teeth among that post. Um, and then talked a little bit about the man that you have become. What What is Kyle's support meant to you, especially when you're drafted, he could be looked at as the guy who had the spot you wanted? Yeah. Um, I mean, that's my brother, man. It's hard to, to put into words. I think that... Um, what he's speaking to is more so the the relationship. And I try to tell people this all the time. Like when I came into camp, Kyle didn't know me from a can of paint and, you know, he showed me the respect, but I also demanded my respect as well. So when he, when we had our interactions, I think he saw just how I was on it as far as my character and, and my play and the way that I was, you know, moving. And I saw that he was open to, me a little bit and I just knew I had to take that and run with it so you know I tell people all the time my first day at camp I thought I was trying to get to the gym you know early Kyle had already been in there for an hour and a half (laughs) and then you know he comes up to me and says you know here Rook carry this bag for me and like I'm like all right shit I'm in the NBA I carry I carry all your bags if you want me to like I don't (laughs) you know but now that I'm in this position I see guys that don't do that there's rookies that come in that don't want to do their rookie duties and it causes a, a, a rift, you know, between the players. And so I say all that to say, if I was coming at him like this is the top guy, I got to cut his legs off from underneath him, I wouldn't probably be in this position I am right now. And if he kept, if he was a jerk to me from day one, you know what I mean, our relationship would have never been what it is to this point. So we would have never been in a position to help each other. You know, we just got through the draft process and I found it really interesting that people were saying Peyton Pritchard, a guard like Kyle Lowry, Malachi Flynn, a guard like Fred Van Vliet. <laughs> when, when you were a guard in the draft, people were looking for a guard like Fred Van Vliet. Is there something we can learn that you guys have, the intangibles, the competitiveness, and that's not just about the measurables that evaluators should be looking for? Uh, nah, you can't teach it, man. And I've, I've struggled with that in the last – two months myself watching this draft unfold is like I've been getting that the Peyton Pritchards and the Malik and I'm just like I don't know like I see the game yeah okay but like what I have I don't even know what it is you know what I mean so I can't look for it as somebody else it's like it's between your ears it's all mental for me at least just speaking for me but um you know only thing you can do as a guy like me is just appreciate that 
that's even the possibility. And I spoke on it a little bit earlier. Like, I don't think some of these kids would have been getting drafted if my story doesn't go this way because they would be looked at in a different light. Guys like me were obviously weren't appreciated when I was coming out. So here we are four years later and these guys are getting drafted. And, and I, now I'm a player of comparison on draft night, which is like the funniest thing in the world to me because, you know, I, I went undrafted. So um, you just appreciate the journey and, and kind of, you know, how things have changed so quickly and the way that the NBA changes. We all know it's a copycat league. So I think there's a lot of teams looking for their next Fred Van Vliet or the next Kyle Lowry and saying, how do we not miss on guys like that again? Yeah, without a doubt. It's a great point. Um, speaking of the business, how, how tough is it to say goodbye to Serge Ibaka and Marcus All? It's tough, man. It's tough. Those, you know, those are two of the better bigs in the league and have been for a long time. Um, unbelievably great people and friends and brothers to us and just having that veteran presence in the locker room and on the plane and just, you know, having that advice and people to lean on when you need it. Um, keeping things fresh, keeping things in perspective. Obviously, we won a championship together, so that bond is lifelong. Um, so it's tough to see him go. You know, you understand the nature of the business and how those things go. So um, we wish him the best, and I just I just can't wait to put both of those guys in 100 pick and rolls and <laughs> double team them and, and, and you know, be annoying and foul them. So um, we'll miss them. I'll miss them more as people than I will as players, but, man, we'll probably miss them on the court for sure. Uh, let me let me follow up on that a second because we played a best of surge off the court yesterday and we were laughing our asses off at the yeah. how hungry are you and eating a beef whatever pizza with yeah. Kawhi Leonard and yeah. the Slam Magazine shoot Freddie like, Vandelay yeah, yeah Freddie Vandelay uh, what's your favorite off the court surge moment uh that's all day every day man that's all day every day with Serge you guys got to see it he turned into a, a media darling there at the end I think he, he started to you know embellish it and once he had his cooking show and the clothing show like he started to realize that people like that kind of stuff but that's how he is every day he's just a character um but you know I won't I won't miss waiting waiting on the team playing for an hour for him to show up I won't miss that <laughs> I wait an hour after the game for him to, to do his uh, his facials and, and, and exfoliating and all that. But I don't miss my guy a lot, man, for sure. Now, you're saying he's a media darling. Like, don't act like you're not a mogul at this point. We see the step <laughs> yeah. and repeat behind mm -hmm. you with, with the chip, with the bag in the middle for the, oh, we, we see the the polo with the logo looking like it's Balenciaga, but it's FBV shop. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> what's next in terms of everything that is the business of, of Bet On Yourself and Fred and Lee? Um, you know, we're just taking things to the next level. And it's like, it's a slow, steady climb, but I mean, you know, if you see the basketball progression, that's the same thing I'm doing in my business life is just trying to take things one step at a time and trying to think about what's next and, and how do I push forward. And um, I remember I had I had this brand my rookie year and I walked in with, with shirts and they're like, what is that? And I was like, this is me. This is my logo. And they're like, what the hell you got a logo for? You know, <laughs> you, at the end of the bench, you're going back and forth to the D League, but I knew in my mind that that's not where I was going to be at always. So, again, just we're just building foundations here and trying to build, like, the blueprint and, and kind of, you know, the system and the structure so that when things do take off, here we are now, I already have something in place that can give people that I love jobs and opportunities and things like that. And also, I'm really into this stuff, so it's just it's super cool to see what – um, the business is definitely booming right now, and, and I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, what's next. Now, I, I know you, and I know now that you have the money, you're not going to forget about the movement, and you were really outspoken in the bubble about the Black Lives Matter movement. And so as we move forward to a new season, what can you, what can the, the organization who's been out front, what can the league and the players do to kind of keep that conversation going? Um, continue to raise awareness. I think I kind of shifted my focus once we decided to resume play. Um, and once I learned some details about the league that, that you know, I won't speak on publicly, I, I kind of shifted my focus away from the, the pretty, you know, the words on the court and the words on the jury, all the symbolic gestures, like, let's get to the real work and let's see what we can really do. So, um, 
I'm doing work in my hometown like I always do. I'm going to continue to try to find work to do, um, you know, in Toronto. And maybe, you know, we'll find some stuff to do in Tampa. So just put your boots on the ground and get to work and make real change. Um, I'm working on a couple scholarship programs. So things like that, that that's long-term effects. Um, I'm not a politician. Um, I'm not a, a social activist. And I think that for me, um, I'm not going to act like one because it, it, it gets clicks on the internet. So I, I just want to shift my focus a little bit away from like the broadcasting in the mainstream um, effect of saying those things on TV because it just becomes null and void and the people behind the scenes that are making real changes are laughing at us anyway. So let's let's see how we can get real change. And child was just on the phone. Um, Larry called me yesterday, Mr. Tannenbaum. And those are the interactions that I want to have. Can I speak to him like I speak to my brother or my dad or my mom, you know, and, and ask him for things and and he respond, all right, that's changed. Like, get him on the phone and, and let's let's make some real things happen. It's funny, as soon as you said boots to the ground and do some real work, I thought that's what got you where you are in life, period. Uh, it's, a, it's a great way to put it. Uh, and also, if we can all, I remember we had you in studio in 2018 and you talked, we were talking about bet on yourself and you said this has been a journey the entire way. There have been bets on yourself at five and there'll be bets on yourself at 25 and at 35, and if we can help any way along that road, let us know because we always enjoy these conversations. Absolutely, man. Thank you for sure. And it's, it takes all of us, man. It takes all of us. And obviously, in my career, I'm the one doing the work, but it's much more than just me. Um, there's a bunch of people behind me that's, that's that's rolling with me along the way, and you know, everybody has to do their part. So. Uh, I'm just excited in terms of professionally that this is where we are in, in my personal life. Um, but as far as, you know, the activism thing goes, like everybody has to do their part and just and, and we'll build it out from there. Uh, we've always enjoyed the conversations because they're real. Um, whatever the topic has been and this has been no different. Thank you for the time and come back on the show whenever you want. All right, brother. Thank you, guys.